welcome back to TC Cars. I'm Brian. I'm Craig. And this week we've got something I'm actually really excited about. That is the, well, let's see what year it is, Craig. I gotta make sure before I say it wrong. That's right, 2024 Mazda CX-50. Oh my gosh, Meridian Edition. We drove this thing last year, but not Meridian. We begged and pleaded for it. And about a month ago, it hit the fleets in Texas for the Texas Truck Radio, actually. Man, we're excited. We drove it there. We did not film it there because we knew we were gonna get it back here. We didn't have time that, that day. But I wanna go over some of the specs with you. In color, Craig. For, I'm not gonna say it wrong. Zircon Sand Metallic. Oh, Zircon, over, yeah. Over terracotta. The MSRP is 40,800 after destination and front and rear splash guards, which seems like a big option. Um, it comes down to 43,860. Not bad. Not bad, actually. Very competitive. You think about things we've had on the show before. The Ford Escape um, Platinum is more than this. So that's not bad. You've also got the things that I think this is really going against, which is Super Ratback and Forester uh, Wilderness spec, both of those. And they are in that ballpark, a little more actually on the Outback trim. So let's talk about what you get with the Meridian Edition. You get, first of all, a really cool hood graphic. Ooh. It's dirty, sorry, I don't wanna rub it too much, but it says Meridian Edition right here. I think it fits the theme of this thing beautifully. You also get the Zircon paint, which gosh, Mazda is look still good. so good at paint. And of course, as while we're here, headlights oh. these things aim still really the best. Well at night still the best the auto high beams work their calibrations are perfect and i know it's silly to point these two things out but mazda is really good at those things optically i think this is the best looking crossover that mazda makes and optically i think it's the best looking crossover on the market that's just yep I, period hey yeah it's mostly yep. down to, mostly down to proportions the hood is long it looks really cool even though underneath this is mechanically sharing a lot with the cx5 and every other mazda other than the cx90 and miata but it looks the best here. You know yeah. why? Because Bob Lutz said a long time ago, it's long, low, and wide it compared to wrong. everything else. It was not wrong. I know he's been canceled in some ways, but we're gonna roll with that, <laughs> that works. Um, but I dig it, the nose looks good. This looks beefy. One complaint I'm gonna have with Meridian is that this bumper is identical in terms of approach angle to the non-Meridian edition, and that's gonna be a problem. In fact, the ride height on this is, I think, 0.1 inch lower than the non-Meridian because the wheel and tire happens to be a little bit lower, which is interesting. Now, speaking of that, come on down. We do have something we've asked for before. In fact, the last time we drove this, we said, oh man, if only it had a good tire to go with it. Well, here we go. Falcon Wild Peaks. These are the crossover version of the Wild Peak ATs. It's 225, 60, 18. Not bad. You've got good siping in the middle. Um, you've got good tread blocks to do some dirt, dusty stuff. It's not a mud terrain, but it's gonna be a lot better than you think in this kind of stuff we're gonna do. In fact, head over to our Texas Truck channel to see on the hill test. That'll be coming out shortly as well. We're gonna do that here after the review. Pretty excited about that. In 18s instead of 19s or 20s, thank you. You can air it down if you need to. Now, cladding. You do have cladding over the fender flares themselves and they come all the way down to the sides. It seems silly, but if you get caught up on a rock, on a trail, this can be easily replaced and it hides scratches way more than paint will. It's a big deal. Ask me how I know my personal vehicles. I'm glad to have that cladding down there. It's a big deal. Something else I like a lot. They do door handles right. Lock it. Just push here, unlock it, unlock it. There you go. There's not a physical button. You just go to do what you're gonna do anyway. So simple, why can't so we simple. all just do that? Life is all about minimizing clicks and inputs. That's one of them, I like that a lot. L wait, wait, that's what life's all about? Yeah, just so you know. That's okay. <laughs> you heard it here first. Elephant in the room, this roof rack. Holy crap, does it look the business. It looks the part. You see that little full right there? You know what that's for? Um, not for noise reduction. No, it's for noise reduction. Does it work? Oh. No. No, this thing is noisy as hell. And I'll be honest right now, if you're on Instagram, you've got a tent on the top of your car, you're braver than I am. I would not daily that for a second. My God, is it noisy. Um, but, but it looks so good. It looks so cool though. <laughs> it look, if you go to the website and look at Marine Edition, this is the car that's on there. This color, that roof rack, and it looks phenomenal. It looks better in person than it does there on the website. All right, come okay. on to the back. We've got Skyactiv G with turbo over here. On that side, CX-50 and all-wheel drive because it means the business. You do have one camera on this car, and it's that one right there, the one that the federal government requires you to have. There is not a 360 camera on here to help you off-road. Kind of a bummer. Down here, though, this makes up for it. See that? See that moving? I'm tapping this one. That one's moving. It's a real exhaust tip, Craig. Yes. It's not fake. It's not hybrid. It's not a turn down. It's proud of it. Let's hear it. That's not bad. Let's see what's making all that noise under the hood here. And oh boy, we have struts, baby. That's kind of nice of a surprise there. Under the hood, we've seen it before. 
it's love or hate with Craig and I. I usually don't love the power band, but I do love its function and its and everything else. Craig's usually fine with everything else. Sky TV Turbo, 2.5 liter. It is a single turbo on the back here. The only difference from this year compared to last year, Craig, is the power rating with premium has gone up two horsepower. Oh, two. Yeah, on 87 octane. And I love that Mazda gives you the numbers for both. That's really cool. Every car today with modern ECUs and wideband O2 sensors does this anyways. But Mazda gives you the data, which is really cool. On 87, it's 227 horse, 310 torque, and all that torque starts at the bottom and runs out at about 4,000, 4,200, and then just kind of wheezes its way to red line and then shifts. But around town, it feels like it's got a bunch of cojones. Um, with premium, 93 octane, not 91, but 93, it jumps to 252 and 320 torque. Mm -hmm. Last year, it jumped to 250, so it's gained two horsepower over the years. I'm okay with that. Anything else to add there? No, I just wish more people would do what they do and not make you have to have premium and just give you the different number. Give you the number. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Everyone's been doing this for about 10 years now. Right. Also, paired to the same 10, I'm sorry, not 10 speed. I wish. Six speed we've had forever, but hard to complain about. It just works and it's not a CVT. Thank you. I'll take the old auto over a new CVT any day. Any day. Let's check out the interior. All right, Brian, trying to time to check out the interior, but first, let's check out this roof rack. Not bad. I mean, it's noisy, but it works. And so, you know, you could do the tent thing and that's fun. It'll, so, it'll hold one Craig. It'll hold one Craig. Let's see if I can get down. Oh, no, it did. Okay. Graceful. Okay, great. Very graceful. Let's check out the rear hatch. Let's get in here. And uh, Brian mentioned this off camera. It's actually pretty roomy. Yeah. The CX-5, you don't get a lot of room, but back here, look at all this room because it's kind of a a little bit longer vehicle than the CX-5, but they're still not trying to force a third row in here, which would have been a mistake, and I'm glad they didn't. Instead, you get gobs of space. Lower the rear seats, you just hit that button. Boom, it comes down. Boom, it's down. Wow, not bad. If we had our seats a little farther forward, they would have got laid flat, but we're a little, well, we have, I don't know, we like our seats back. Yep. Um, a front, what look the? at that. Whoa. It's a spare tire. Spare tire. Where's the inflator kit? Have you ever seen a spare tire brand? Uh, oh, wait, wait a second. <laughs> wait, that can't be right. Is there a, is there a brand spare tire? Oh, it's a Kenda. It's a Kenda. Okay. But the model the model is spare tire. Yeah, I've never seen that. Wow. That's very okay. good. Anyways, very nice. Full size. Actually, looks full size as far as like yeah, height. Yeah, yeah. That's very nice. You could actually put that on and drive a good ways to get yeah. it fixed. So. Well, it's better than a donut. Much better than a donut or the inflator kit. You get a little cubby over here. That if you're a Subaru, that'd be for your dogs. Um, this is for spare lug nuts that Mazda gave us. And then you get a little uh, outlet there to okay. charge your phone or whoever knows what else. But you know what? You have a spare tire because there's no hybrid nonsense down here. <sighs> yes, thank you. Thank let's you. go to the second row. All right, let's get on to the second row of this bad boy. And Brian, first off, before we do anything, look how wide in the angle of that door. That's almost a 90 degree opening angle. Makes the access, ingress and egress very easy. And the re one of the reasons they did that is so you can access that roof rack and get up and down easy. Pretty smart. They actually thought that through. Very Not nice. Bad. The actual door itself, you get a nice door grab, and it's the same as up front. There's no downgrade in the back, except that right here it's hard plastic instead of soft like you get in the front row but the texture is not terrible but no it's not terrible and you get room for a water bottle down there that works um let's get on into the seat and this what is this called right terracotta terracotta yep terracotta looks, looks nice good. i'm sitting behind brian that's i'm not touching on these that's pretty nice that's like impressive. that no mat packet on pocket on this side and matte pocket here. I always wonder why they don't just put them on both. Rear AC in this segment, that's a big deal. A lot of cars in this segment don't have that. Trucks included, cars, yeah. crossovers, all this. That's all actually this. a really big deal. Really big deal. Very interesting choice down here, Brian. It's very old school. USB-A on both. No oh. USB-C. So we continue this frustration. If you have a USB-C charger or a USB-A charger, Here's you always have the wrong one depending on which your vehicle you're in it. And it's very frustrating. Yep. Surprising they well, don't have both. for us, we change cars every Monday. And Especially for we have us. the wrong cable every time. You do get a nice uh, fold down armrest with cup holders. That's really nice. So you got places to put your drinks. But Brian, this has got a panoramic roof. Throw Let's it see you. what happens. It works for me. I've got some room. Okay, let's see well, what happens with you. First of all, I'm sitting behind Craig, and this is just how it was set. Well, that's so, okay. Let's just see. Let's just see. Okay. Look. You're, okay. And for their viewers, Brian is 6'4. I'm 5'9. Yeah. Hang on. My shoe is caught down here. Which, okay. Okay. All right. Well, all right. Um, and as usual, it's not. The panoramic roof is ruining your life. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, Brian, it's okay. The Rangers won. That's all that matters. All right, Brian, moving on to the front row. Let's check out the door pocket first. Spot for Brian's uh, apple juice and his wallet, I'm sure. But Brian, here, look. I want to put my cell phone no, no, nowhere. There's nowhere to oh. put your cell phone. That's very frustrating. Well, you should have a spot well, for that. Well, there's a spot right here. Yeah, then that's true. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that. Let's get in here because we do have some cubby holes and it's not like there's not any. We got a banana holder up here. Oh, great. So that's a banana holder. Okay, great. We got coffee and monster holders. Okay. And then we got one 
cell phone holder. Well, no, there's good news because this doesn't work as a charger. Oh, okay. So, so, so then you do, do this, this way, and then, then okay. There so there's two. So just now, don't, but, just don't use the radio. Now I can't use this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> A little bit of a frustration there, but that's okay. We're kind of kidding a little thinking. bit, but not really. You do get nice soft touches here. That is you get that leather on the padding. That's actually nice. And the stitching continues onto the dash. Looks real good. And look nice how soft it is. You can see nice like it's straight by the way. By the way, we've had some brands that try this and they don't get this. This is hard to do. Yeah. And we're going to talk, this is built in the Huntsville, Alabama plant, a joint venture with Toyota where they also build a Corolla Cross. This is not the same car at all. Two different vehicles completely. Just sharing a building. And this is a, but it's a brand new plant. So they're, for that to be right and that well, be done that well, that's impressive. Yeah. Re really like what they've done there. So let's start this bad boy up and let's see what we get. Very simple gauges. Um, we can hit the info button here and we can get different items in the center screen. There's your lane keep assist, not lane centering. Very frustrating. Yep. There's your just traditional uh, speedometer and that, look, look how clean that looks. That's a digital display. It almost looks the same as this actual analog display. That looks they, they really match clean. It really well. That, no, no other car manufacturer man matches it that well. That's impressive. Then you can just go back to your drive info. This is what we averaged today to the, driving to the shoot as responsibly as we could, about 23 miles a gallon. More on that in a minute. Um, um, that's pretty much it. It's clean yeah. and straightforward. There's really nothing else. We get the traditional Mazda display that is touch now. You can. Nope, only in CarPlay. Oh, only in CarPlay. I'm sorry. And you have to go to CarPlay. So you go to CarPlay and it is touch screen there, but then it's really kind of cumbersome. But Brunt, this is one of our arguments all over yeah. the years. Mazda's got it far away. It is in your more line of your line of sight. That is really nice. But the touch screen functionality is not as good. But no, they give you this wheel, which is, I think, the best wheel in the business. And I end up using CarPlay even with the wheel. Yeah, you know, and it's one of those things, if you own the car, you just get over it and you get used to it and it's fine. Like Audi's been doing that forever, Mazda's been doing it forever, it works. This is my drive. I do love it. Here's one of the best things about Mazda. They keep they do keep things simple. You gotta give them that. Oh yeah. And one of the things they do, so there's three. Sport, normal, and off-road. That is it. There is no eco, ice, dirt, loot. None of that crap because I look. Love that. And these modes actually work. So you talk to the, we've talked to these engineers at length. Um, the way they design these modes, they just make sense. You yeah. don't have to overthink it. Yeah, the argument that Dave Coleman had for this was off-road should cover anything off pavement. Yeah. And it should be intuitive enough to figure it out, and it is. But he also said, if you're on off-road and you want to have fun, put it in sports. Yeah. So that's what I did. Let's take it on the road and let's see the 0-60 to 60 times. All right, Brian, uh, enough beeping. It's time to see what the CX-50 Meridian Edition with how much power? 227? 227 with 87 octane, which we have right now. Hit it. Well, let it boost it to 2600 and dump it. Oh, because we have a torque converter. Yes, we do. Sounds like it's front wheel drive. Shift it early because it needs it. And uh, she's in some heat soak, I'll be honest. I'm shifting at 4,500, shifting at 48, actually. And what was that? Well, what with me in the what car, that? that was 9.7. Hey, that's not great. That feels bad. What'd you get without me? <sighs> okay, well, look, just to explain to those that maybe haven't seen us before, we do four runs consecutively, um, different directions, and that, look, heat soak is really an issue right now, although it's not hot, <clears> it's 79 degrees, but the multiple runs make it hot. 7.31 is the best I saw out of it. Okay, respectable. Very respectable, but that requires loading that torque converter for a minute. In the real world, you're never going to see that off a stoplight. To be fair, we had 87. You could have put a premium in. Right. Or I could have put a premium in. Right. We would have gotten 252 power. We would have gotten uh, 252 horsepower and 320 torque, which would have helped a little bit. And this gets to the whole Mazda philosophy when it comes to driving these days. Thank you. And that is linearity. Um, well, and what m most people will do, most people don't push a car to 100%. No, no, most to people will okay. never load a torque converter like that. Most people will drive right. it normally and in their everyday functionality think, this car is quick because yeah, of that in, in, download in turbo roll. power. Well, in the roll-in, it's got shove. It does have that. That's what most people right. will feel driving this. But thing. when you flip through car and driver and look at that 060 time, that's not what you're feeling day to day. Right. But that's not new. That's been the case for years. Sure. This thing, when I just gave it gas and let it do auto hold, just floated off the line, was eight and a half seconds routinely. Yeah, not good. Yeah, I tried several runs like that. Not yeah. great. So, anyways, that out of the way, let's get on that linearity because I don't think the powertrain applies to that because it's it's just not the powertrain. The, the turbo is not a linear power plant. The NA version, which you can get, 
in other friends is linear. Linear. So, ride and drive. I want you to talk about that because you did the dirt roads with it. <clears throat> so ride and drive is Meridian Edition, and it's got the tires. And I, we've recently had some other SUV crossovers to yep. take on a uh, dirt roads that I drive on. And this was not the quickest. I drove about okay. on average ten miles an hour slower than some others that sh had no business driving as fast as they did. Right. Because they had just better suspension setups. Um, but I'll tell you this, and uh, most every other crossover I drive on that dirt road, you turn trash control off, and you yep. completely disable stability, and what happens is you get a little bit sideways and it kicks in immediately. As you even think about going sideways, yeah. it shuts everything down. Any kind of throttle, yellow, everything. And it just, it, you can't have any fun. Actually, it disrupts what you're doing as well. So this, where the mozzie linearity comes into play, and Dave Coleman's of the world. Yep, steering load they, up. They, they want things to feel natural. What, what your brain thinks a car's supposed to do, they let it do that. Even though it's sliding a little bit, they okay. let it continue that because that's the way a car you think should handle it. It shouldn't cut halfway through. No, it should. So they let it go a little bit. Okay. Um, not crazy. Like, it's still, you still feel it cutting in. You're like, oh, I wish it was completely off. But there is, again, at that 80% threshold, Mazda's nailing that part. Okay. And that was actually my result as well on the street because I did a back road brawl with this. There's a road that I do for handling testing. Every car we get, I take it on there. And at eight tenths, it was really good. Yeah. And so when you when you go to lean in, you go, oh, the steering, you get twenty percent steering, you get twenty percent turn in. It's not this electric steering, power steering, like super sharp turn in right. that Nissan likes to do. I love that. And mm -hmm. the shock load up on the road is excellent. I thought that mm -hmm. was really good. You made a point that on off road, the shock travel wasn't quite enough. I'm not say off road on dirt roads at speed. Mm -hmm. On pavement at speed, it was great. Interior wise, I want to add to a few things that you mentioned earlier, and that's just about ergonomics. I'm six foot four and I have plenty of headroom in the front. Yeah. I'm very comfortable in the seat. I do wish you had uh, crotch shoulders in the seats. I don't know why the Yeah, and the Meridian Edition is not the top trim. We, you know, yeah, we've, we've had we've a had higher spec before. trim and it had better cameras and that. The interior cabin is tight. You've got this door panel, door card versus console thing that Mazda's doing with everything now. I don't know why. Maybe that's a safety thing because GM's doing that with some stuff now too. But and, the, you, and that's a driver specific issue. It's a non issue for me. No, I'm not saying it's an issue. I'm saying it just feels tighter in a cabin that is quite large. Oh, okay. That's, that's what I'm and, and you're, no, we talked about this off camera. To be fair, this thing, Mazda is chasing the Forester and Outback yep. with this, the Subaru, you know, well, Instagram camp life. And, and then, especially and, with the Meridian Edition, they're chasing that. Those two vehicles, you get way more room in those areas. But if looks could kill, this would be murdering, and it does. Absolutely. And like you said off camera earlier, it's going to take sales from the wilderness Subaru people. It is. It's going to get a chunk of that. Yeah, there's no so, doubt. All being said, I think that's all that really matters with this because no one's actually offering these things. <laughs> it's got the look to get it done, and everything you like about Mazda exists still. That's true. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned. Sorry that we're a little under the weather. Fall and uh, Texans and cool weather. We don't mix well. Yeah. We just like the heat. Just keep the heat. Uh, well, but it, it's 70 now and it was 30 a couple days ago. So our noses don't know what to do with that. Thanks for watching. If you want to see this thing off-road, head over to our truck channel. We're doing that right now. See you on the next one.